These are the books that those who teach university courses are the most obsessed with. Each university course typically has one or two textbooks that the lecturer has assigned for students to read. Often the lectures, homework and exams are based on these texts, so finding out what these books are gives a lot of insight into what studying that subject might be like. And now we can do just that, thanks to a project called Open Syllabus Galaxy, which has sifted through over 7 million examples of college syllabi to identify the top 1 million texts assigned to students across disciplines. So what can we learn by looking at which books professors prescribe for their students? I dug through thousands of results to pull out some of the top textbooks across the fields of math, chemistry, engineering, physics, and astronomy to take a closer look at what they're like and what students have to say about them. What the list shows us is that no matter where you go to university, there's a pretty good chance you will be asked to read the same books as everybody else. Some books are just so popular that they've become entrenched in what it means to study science. But that is no accident. There is a hidden machinery that keeps the same textbooks dominating year after year. This is the list of the most commonly assigned books across any subject. The top spots with appearances in over 10,000 syllabi each went to reference guides for learning how to write. The highest ranking science book is Calculus by James Stewart. It claimed overall spot number 6, with just under 10,000 appearances on syllabi. It's sandwiched between The Republic by Plato and Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. It makes some sense that a calculus book would be a popular text to assign, since it is a fundamental tool for many different sciences. Calculus is a huge book that covers a lot, and departments can adopt the same book for teaching multiple levels of the course. Lecturers might like the problem sets, which they can assign as homework without writing their own. And students might like the worked examples. But the choice of a textbook is not just down to being liked. There are dark and mysterious forces acting too. Publishers may have online systems like WebAssign, MyMathLab, or Mastering Physics that, once adopted, create huge inertia for a teacher to change to a different book, even if they prefer it. Stewart's Calculus does have pretty good reviews on Goodreads, with an average rating of 3.98 stars out of 5, from nearly 1,500 reviews. According to the 5-star reviews, Calculus is the greatest book ever written on Calculus, and even cozy like a warm blanket on a chilly winter day. Other 5-star reviews also say the book is informative, detailed, and a great reference even after the class is over. One-star reviews, like one that simply read trauma, may have more to do with the student's opinion on the subject itself rather than anything Stuart wrote. But the process of buying textbooks can be traumatic. The going price for a copy of one of the latest editions of Calculus can be over $250, and Stuart did get rich off of it. He spent $30 million building a calculus-inspired house he called the Integral House. It was also a concert hall, since Stuart was also a violinist, which makes the violin on the cover make more sense. Stuart died in 2014, and back then calculus was selling over half a million copies a year. The publisher seems to have made no effort to slow down promoting it since. Beyond Calculus, another popular textbook for math students is Discrete Mathematics and Its Application by Kenneth Rosen, which covers areas of math like set theory and logic. This subject is particularly useful for computer science students. This book appeared on 3,780 syllabi and has an average rating of 3.89 out of 5 stars in over 1,500 reviews. Reviews called it the best book on theoretic and computer science applied mathematics, and said that it had modern and relevant examples that were particularly helpful. However, some one-star reviews did say that this book could have been more technical. Inside the book, you can find example problems with helpful guided solutions. What I have here is not the latest edition of the book, but rather a copy from 1999. 
The fundamentals of discrete mathematics probably haven't changed much since then, though there might be some new applications. And you know how it is with textbooks, the publishers will release new editions as often as they can with minor updates or restructures. They are incentivized to do so to keep students buying new books. The latest edition of this book also comes with the bonus of accessing something called Connect, created by the publisher McGraw-Hill. They say that Connect allows the professor to assign homework, quizzes, and tests easily, and it automatically grades and records the scores of the student's work. This is not just a textbook for sale, but a whole system designed to ensure this book is chosen over others. They are giving the teachers a way to outsource the writing and grading of the coursework itself. The most popular chemistry textbook appearing on 3500 syllabi is Chemistry, the Central Science. It has a 3.89 average star rating on Goodreads from over a thousand reviews. Some fans of this text call it an absolute gem of a textbook, and others note that it's a great introductory text to the subject that explains complicated concepts clearly. Some of the two-star reviews of this book say that even though the subject matter might have been a challenge, they admit that the textbook did its best to make it easier. Example problems in this book include suggested strategies to help students understand how to reach the correct solution. Another popular chemistry text for a more advanced student is Principles of Instrumental Analysis by Skoog, Holler, and Crouch. It covers the theory, applications, and limitations of analytical chemistry tools. This book appears on 2,800 syllabi and has an average rating of 3.95 stars out of 5 from a smaller sample of just under 300 reviews. Five and four star reviews of the book say it was a very helpful overview with great coverage of topics. Several reviews even mentioned using the textbook beyond the classroom as a reference guide, even at their work desks. Example problems in the textbook include step-by-step -step solutions for using specific analytical techniques. For engineers, one of the top engineering textbooks is called Advanced Engineering Mathematics by Erwin Kreisig. This book appears on 6,700 syllabi and has an average rating of 3.83 stars from its 35 reviews on Goodreads. A five-star review of the book says it's a great resource to refresh fundamental knowledge of the subject, but does say that the material can be more difficult for a reader unfamiliar with the subject matter. In addition to traditional example problems, this text also includes theorems and their proofs as well to build a fundamental understanding of the topic. Another popular engineering book getting assigned in classrooms is Materials Science and Engineering, an Introduction by Callister and Rethwich. It focuses on explaining the properties and structure of materials like steel and silicon semiconductors. This book has been assigned on 3,922 syllabi and has an average rating of 4.09 stars from 856 reviews. Some five-star reviews called the book beautiful and fascinating, and another called it an essential book for those who take a material engineering course. Other reviews say the book is very engaging and extremely helpful. According to a three-star review, the book's only major downside is that it's about material science, which, fair enough. Different sections of this book will include clear diagrams and step-by-step -step solutions to example problems. For introductory physics textbooks, this Fundamentals of Physics by Halliday, Resnick and Walker is one of the most popular options being assigned to students. This text appeared on syllabi 3,912 times and has an average rating of 4.13 stars out of over 2,000 reviews. The five-star reviews of this book offered extremely high praise, with one review saying it serves as an always trusty reminder of why I endeavoured on a career in physics in the first place. Several reviews also note how funny the text is, with some whimsical example problems. Some lower ratings said that the book either went too deep on subjects, or was too shallow on others. Another review wished that it included more of the history behind these physics principles. Another physics book that's top on the list of assigned texts is actually the highest rated book in this video, and that's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics by David Griffiths. 
This book has appeared on 1600 syllabi and has an average rating of 4.25 stars out of nearly 3,000 reviews. Plus it has a cat on its cover, which is actually Schrodinger's cat, which is a bit sad when you look at the back. The five star reviews of this book say that it's an accessible text that's good for both the classroom and self-study. One review even said it gave them faith in textbooks again, saying that it showed me you can write a good, readable, helpful textbook on a subject that is extremely hard to understand. Another review calls it concise, clear, and tangible. Some two-star reviews note issues with the organization of the book, and that it could be too concise in places at the expense of more mathematical detail. Unlike some of the other texts I've mentioned, the example problems in this book are highly technical, as you might expect from quantum mechanics, but Griffiths does supply a key at the beginning of the book to help you know which problems are essential and which ones are extra challenging to test the reader. Solutions to all these problems are only available in the instructor manual, however. A popular book to assign to astronomy students is The Cosmic Perspective by Bennett, Donahue, Schneider and Voigt. It appears on 1080 syllabi and has a 3.94 rating out of 35 reviews. A four-star review of the book says it's an effective introduction to the topic that instilled wonder in them as a reader. The review also highlights the mix of history, math and philosophy that rounds out the text. This book includes a variety of questions at the end of each chapter, including group discussion questions, deeper short answer questions, as well as quantitative questions to get into the math. When I was at university, I bought textbooks in my first year, but realized as time went on that it's not really necessary to do so. I'd usually just recommend now visiting the university library for a copy when you need it. The textbook publishers do have a new tactic to fight against this though and to kill the used book market. And that is creating online homework grading systems that require one-off access codes. Acquiring these codes means buying a copy of the latest textbook, even if you already have an old copy or had planned to share with a friend. I've heard stories of people paying hundreds of dollars to get these codes just so they can submit their course homework. It sounds like an unfair and wasteful system that isn't in the best interest of students. There are some alternatives. There is a growing trend of OERs, which are crowdsourced free textbook projects. And some of my favorite lecturers wrote their own course materials to distribute so students wouldn't need to buy anything external. Course coordinators could choose to rely on more accessible materials, so why don't they? 80% of the textbook market is owned by just five major publishers. They didn't get there by accident, but by putting pressure on schools to use their systems. There are all kinds of revenue sharing schemes going on too, with university bookstores, plus visits from textbook representatives, which might provide training, tech support, and other sweeteners. Those departments, tempted by the question banks, pre-made lecture slides, teaching guides, and auto-graded homework, find themselves trapped in a world where students are struggling to afford to do their homework and financing the mansions of the publishers. This doesn't mean the books are bad. In fact, there are many five-star reviews on these books. It's just that professors can't switch them even if they wanted to. Many professors and lecturers do care about students and want their courses to be accessible, but changing a textbook that's weaseled its way into the design of the course can be like changing the engine of a plane while it's in flight. These books might be the most popular, not because professors are obsessed with them, but because professors can't get away from them. When you look on the map on Open Syllabus, you aren't just seeing the top 1 million most assigned books, you are looking at how education is shaped, not only by ideas, but by systems. Systems that reward convenience, consistency, and profit. You are looking at which voices get amplified for decades. Knowing this gives us a chance to choose more carefully, to imagine new models for textbooks that are fairer, cheaper, and more open. Thanks for watching this video and thanks to my Patreon supporters for making it possible. A special shout out to today's Patreon Cat of the Day, Alice.